The NFL rushing touchdowns leader is Jamal Williams. Yup. And the Detroit Lions running back is just one touchdown away from Barry Sanders' single season franchise record. Williams ran in his 15th touchdown of the season this week, extending his lead over second place Derrick Henry. How did he do it? I'm Matty F. Brown for the Underdog Fantasy Film Room. Let's get to the tape. The punch counterpunch nature of football was at play. Bears head coach Matt Aberflus, at his core, wants to run cover two defensive looks, and these two high deals have gained popularity across the league. And so, with offenses getting smarter and more effective, the run game is popping. Like this early first and 10 run, the Lions were down 10 7. Williams got 26 yards to open the second drive of the game. To Detroit's 11 personnel under centre trips formation, Chicago ran that too high cover two defence. To a spread formation, the Bears technically would still have had a matching amount of numbers in the box. This guy in the open C gap, this guy in the A gap, and this guy in the B gap. However, the Lions shifted Armand Ra St. Brown into the core, and this put the numbers advantage back in their favour, giving them eight gaps for the seven Chicago box defenders. The duo concept, common against these defensive looks, double teams of three technique away from the point of attack. This was some serious displacement from Penn Isul and Jonah Jackson. Meanwhile, the linebacker that Jamal Williams was reading on the power without the pull of run looked to hold in his shrinking A-gap, with Jackson managing to climb to him. Chicago's defense, in big nickel as a response to the 11 personnel, essentially asked their third safety to be a hero and beat the block of St. Brown. The receiver was able to do just enough on his seal attempt, helped by how wide the gap was for Williams to hit. The running back tempoed his steps well through the hole, pressing the double team and avoiding tripping. He then ran through the reaching arm of the box defender before being tackled by the pair of deep half safeties. This outnumbered issue is exactly why defenses will try to cheat the angles and the math, or maths as I'd say, to defend the run. Take this DeAndre Swift first and 10 carry midway through the second quarter, with the Lions up 14 to 10. Detroit, with their 21 personnel and shift into I formation, had the numbers advantage versus cover two, eight gaps for seven defenders. And that eighth man, the fullback, is able to move across the formation post-snap, changing where that extra gap goes. Chicago, wanting to run cover two, therefore moved their two defensive tackles from an overlook into basically an under. While this went against the flow of the weak lead play that the Bears got, it did keep their backside linebacker clean to flow and it switched up the angles. Usually, the play side guard and center would have doubled and climbed to the front side linebacker. Instead, the front side guard had a free release to this player and the backside center guard were left with the combo block. The second linebacker there, even with his gap shifting over, had more of a downhill path to run because of this movement. More important for the end result though, was the Bears beating their blocks. That always helps. The front side linebacker demolished the lead block of the fullback, Jason Cambinda, setting a hard crease to the play and knocking this into the running back Swift. The next linebacker in the fit managed to go underneath the climbing guard, Evan Brown, penetrating the play, alerting the center Frank Ragnall. This got the nose tackle one-on-one -on -one with the guard with the leverage advantage to the play, and he was able to clean it all up. Swift gained just one yard, Detroit got into a second and nine. At the start of Detroit's two minute drill, Swift had another tough first and 10 run after Chicago once more cheated the math. The Lions' shift of their tight end into the core and then wide stack on one side of their two by two set and under center formation removed a Bears defender from the box. Familiar story here, but with Chicago wanting to run cover two, this left them a man light against the run. But the Bears adjustment killed Detroit's wide zone play. They called in a pirate style stunt. I believe Aberflus may have it as a blitz called Patterns, with the three tech and end penetrating the gaps next to them. Then the linebacker working over the top of this. Both of these defensive linemen did a great job reading the wide zone flow towards them, playing through their linemen instead of running themselves out of the play or just getting washed away. This created better angles for the second level behind, buying time for the defense to win back the numbers. It also kept those two linebackers behind clean. 
Saul and Jackson were occupied by the stunting end, seeing the first off-ball linebacker shoot his gun to the inside of tight end Brock Wright. Swift bubbled his run outside, where he was brought down for a loss of one by the penetrating first inside linebacker, but also the other inside linebacker who'd worked to overlap, clean to the ball, and being the second man in the run fit. But, as is so often the case in games, the Lions' rushing attack had the extra answers for Chicago. This time, they came back with better angles of their own. Swift, despite those two one-yard runs, finished the game 11 for 78 rushing yards and a touchdown. On the first drive of the second half, following a Swift 35-yard draw run, Williams, Jameson, the rookie receiver, not Jamal yet, took a reverse play for 40 yards, putting Detroit inside Chicago's 10-yard line. This capitalized on the aggressive scraping and pursuit of the Bears' defense. You can see that Chicago wanted to play cover two and cover down with their slot defender to the Lions 11 personnel trips look. Again, it left them short in the box. So the Bears called in that same patterns or pirate stunt. The second level tried to work hard over the top of this movement, especially with the running back's path and the pulling guard going to this side too. This ran them out of the real play where they would have been met by a wall of offensive line if they'd tried to work back to it. The free-releasing Sewell at right tackle was even able to get up to the deep half safety after checking on the linebackers. Isolated receiver DJ Chark also deserves credit. He did well versus his cover two corner, demonstrating the understanding across the board from Detroit's offense of what is needed. He widened in his release, knowing that the defender technique would look to get hands-on and body presence to this type of action. From there, Chark stayed calm and he worked with the leverage he had, kicking the corner deep outside away from the play. The end zone angle shows that the backside defense end got caught peeking to the handoff too. He thought he could scrape along the line of scrimmage once he saw Goff hand the ball off with a read type action at the mesh point. Instead, of course, the play came back his way. Jamison Williams' weaving to set up Sewell's open field block was impressive and it maximized the available yardage here. He looks like a real early talent. The way to go at aggressively penetrating defensive linemen is to let them through and then whack them. Detroit showed that perfectly on the very next play, the first and eight or goal with Swift in the backfield. Chicago actually matched the box numbers on this play with single high coverage and seven for the seven. Yet Swift was still able to power through for six yards. That's because the Lions ran a crunch concept that exploited the Bears' style. First up, their center block away from the nose tackle and pull from that guard saw the nose look to get hands on the departing center and the linebacker on that side pull his trigger downhill to what looked like the front side of the run to him. The pulling guard, Jackson, was able to help clean up penetration from the nose tackle. To the play side, the three technique defensive tackle looked to run through into the backfield. Following the pulling guard, and to the defense, this does look a bit like counter, but instead the three technique was swatted away by the tight end, Brock Wright, coming across from his off the line of scrimmage position. Saul kicked out the front side end to create room in the crease that was created. Meanwhile, the safety, moving his gap back with Wright's departure, had to deal with a crackback block from receiver Josh Reynolds. Though this safety got rid of the block and did end up making the tackle, the runner, Swift, had already got the yardage. And the main beneficiary of all this was Jamal Williams. He ran in the second and two touchdown after Swift set it up. This put the Lions up by three scores. Detroit's motion from 13 personnel tidied up the spilling goal line defense of Chicago. Williams running the duo path saw the interior penetration and he thought bounce. From there, he managed to beat the edge linebacker to the corner for the two yard score. And the now trademark celebration followed. Although this one went unflagged and we didn't get to see the extra pump. And not that they needed it, up by four scores with five minutes left in the fourth quarter, but Jamal Williams iced the game, beating the pirate pattern stunt after the Bears were rejected on a fourth and two on offense. Chicago still ran a cover two defense to the 22 personnel I formation look of Detroit, but they did play it heavier or tried to. The Lions had the perfect play dialed up though, a counter run. They handled the Bears' stunt really well on the front side of the play, 
not getting beat to the inside by the slanting three technique and the slanting end. Meanwhile, from the backside, guard Jackson and off-ball tight end James Mitchell with a pullers on the counter. Jackson cleared out the force defender, the cloud cornerback. Mitchell dealt with the first linebacker showing up, the guy trying to work over the top of that pirate stunt. This was the front side Ali dealt with for Williams. To the backside, fullback Kabinda secured the edge, which also got the backside inside linebacker flowing the wrong way to start off with. And then the crucial block was executed by Brock Wright, the front side tight end. He helped with the stunt inside from the defensive end right up in front of him, but then he climbed up to the second level, cleaning out this desperately trying to catch up linebacker from the backside. As a result, Williams was untouched into the third level of the defense, where he then broke the tackle of the backside half safety with an offhand stiff arm before securing the football and going down in bounds. Yes, that's quarterback Jared Goff running over to congratulate his teammate at the end of the play. Because this 58-yard run meant Williams hit a contract bonus, a $250,000 rushing total incentive. Yeah, that's worth hyping up. Williams is now six yards off his first 1,000-yard rushing season in the NFL, and he gets a revenge game to gear up for. The rest of Detroit's attack has been quietly effective. Since week six, the Lions, with Jared Goff at quarterback, lead the NFL in dropback EPA per play. However this season ends for the kneecap biters, the Lions have made for a uniquely fun offense and this is a thank you. I'm sure you Jamal Williams fantasy owners will be thinking exactly the same. Thanks for watching this Underdog Fantasy Film Room. If you've liked the video, please do subscribe to our channel and like the video. If you want to talk football, comment in the comment section down below. And until the next tape, this has been Matty F. Brown.